Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vol, and in this video we're having a look at the add-on Resample Mesh. So Resample Mesh is a paid for add-on for Blender, it costs $25. Now I think it's important to mention that cost straight away, because I can see there being quite a lot of comparison between this and Mesh Machine. And I think if I don't cover that as I go through bits, I think it's going to get asked about a lot, or comparisons are going to be made in the comments section, so I just want to get ahead of that. So in contrast, Mesh Machine is about $45, so we're talking about $20 more expensive. And there is definitely some overlap in what these things can do, though I think they do them in different ways. Now, as I say, I think there's going to be a lot of comparison here between these two tools. And I'm not saying one is better than the other. I just think you need to be able to or have some comparisons so that you know some of the differences. So I'm just starting with a cube here, and we're just going to bevel that. Now, what we're going to do is go into edge mode and select there, control select there, shift and control select there. Now, you can do this on multiple edges or different edges at the same time. And we'll look at a couple of the functions. We're going to focus on the remesh because, well, that's the name of the tool. But it does quite a lot else as well. And we'll cover some of those. Now, this isn't going to be a tutorial where I go through everything. So control shift and R to bring this up. But if you do want a tutorial that goes through this more gradually through each of the different tools, then give the video a like. And if I know that enough people are interested, then I can do that or just say in the comment section. So as you can see, we've got a few different functions here. We can change between resample and smooth just by hitting R or S. And then we've got other functions as well, such as connect, unknot, distribute, and then we can apply it. There's also a circlify tool and a cleanup tool, and they're quite nice as well with what you can do with them. But we'll start with the resampling. So all you do is hold down shift and scroll up if you want more, and scroll down if you want less. It's that easy. Now you'll notice that this automatically tries to triangulate the mesh. You can tell it not to do that. If I press shift and C, it will turn that off. And then if I carry on doing it, it will make that go away. So you've got a few options here depending on what you want. And I actually think this could be a really useful tool in terms of getting things like quads. So that's our first thing we can do. Now, if we just press space to apply that and we go into face mode instead. Now notice this worked on edges. The first similarity that's going to be drawn is that if I select these and press Y and then go to Refuse, we can also do the same thing with Mesh Machine, though obviously it's a bit more expensive. But we also get a few different options here. We can press T to change the tension as well, and that will change how much this has got as basically its profile. Now we can also do the same thing with our Resample Mesh. Again, we're working off edges instead of faces, so I'm just going to select those edges there, and we can Control Shift and C this time, and that will circularize it and allow us to change things as much as we want. It also has a flip, which allows us to make things move inwards as well. So again, we've got the same sort of functionality, it's just separated a little bit. And I think they're both equally good. It just depends on what you want to do. Now, where there becomes quite a bit of a difference is when you start involving maybe other things that you want to do. So I'm just going to bring in another cube and we're just going to go into edge mode and I'm going to add a load of edge loops here and a load of edge loops here. Now, with certain add-ons now, we used to not be able to bevel this very well. It gets stuck when it gets to an edge. But if you've got something like Ensolve, you can start doing this much further. Now we've got this thing called hard bevel and that allows you to bevel as much as you want and it ignores all the different edges, which is great. So we can do a lot now with hard surface modeling and I obviously just put this grid in for the sake of simplicity, but this could be any sort of mesh with complex bits to it. So that's really nice that we can do that. But this is where the problem comes. If we were to, let's just come out of that, if we were to use Mesh Machine and try to redo this, hit Y and then Refuse, it will say we can't do this because it's an Engon. And being that these work off faces, this doesn't like this. However, if we go into Edge Mode and select to there, and then we can do the same thing, let's say to here on the other side, Control Shift and R, Resample Mesh, doesn't care. It will just do this anyway. So it works out whatever we want to do. Now, in reality here, we probably want this to be connecting these points here. So I'm just going to press Shift and C to remove the auto clean. And you can see that works perfectly fine. And we can get down to the point where this is relatively close or we could go way further. So there are definitely some differences between these tools that I think are worth knowing about. 
We also get a range of other features as well. Let's just click there and then come to here. For example, and that one, we might want these a little bit more equally spaced out. So once again, we've got Control Shift and R and we've got a distribute function. So if I press D, it's gonna equally space everything out. If now if I undo that quickly and control shift and R, you can also actually set that to automatically happen. You can see here that I've got this T option which says to be uniform or not. If I hit that to now be true as I do this, so you'll notice it automatically does this in a uniform way. So really cool. The other thing that I want to mention, if we just come here, is one very powerful function that I think is worth mentioning, which is if I control shift and C to circularize this, and I do that flip and do something like that, you notice that we've got this mesh here and this looks like an absolute nightmare. We've got a lot of cleaning up to do. This is gonna be a problem. Now, if I just shift and D and bring this to the side, my normal way of cleaning this up would be with another add-on. It is with hard ops, and if I press Q and go to operations, you can see we've got a clean mesh, and this normally works very well, and it has cleaned the sides very nicely here, but it hasn't dealt with these faces very well. This bit here, um, so that's a problem. Now, if we come to our options here, and we use resample mesh and press Z, you can see that this is a vastly superior cleanup option in many ways. Uh, we have gone a little bit too far. Let's angle that limit down to about 0 0.05 to try and get those back. But this has dealt with those overlaps really nicely in a way where I haven't found a tool that does this very well. Now, for me, just these two features by themselves, the resample and this improved cleanup seem vastly worth it to me. Um, and that's not even covering half of the other things we can do. Now there's also a lot of power, I would say, in the fact this selects via edges or just the way that it seems to select things. So if we just, I don't know, I'm just gonna use box cutter, so Alt and W, I'm just gonna D and then bring in an end on cut and do something like this. Let's do that. And then B to bevel, and we can bring in something that might look a bit like this something there, yep, we'll just go with that, and then come to our modifier and apply this. When we go into our edge mode, we've got quite a lot going on here, and again, if we go into face mode, if we were to use something like Mesh Machine, we can deal with this and change these bevels up, so I could just Y and then refuse them, and again, we could do things like scroll up to make this a little bit more, but we have to do it bit by bit. What's really cool with our resample mesh is that we can just select those, Control, Shift and R. Let's go to R once again to resample and start changing this, let's Shift and C to have it clean the mesh automatically. So we could just do little bits if we want to, but what's really cool is I could just go all the way here and do the whole of this edge and just resample all of that and this will eventually make this as uniform as it can. So this is really fun. I really like this. I think it's got a lot of potential. There is still more that this can do if we just bring it in a cube, and then let's go into edge mode, control and B to bevel that edge, and then we go into face mode, and then we I to inset this, and it goes too far. We've got this horrible mess, and we go into edge mode. What I can do is select that, control select that, control shift and R, Go from resample to, I probably want smooth for this, Y to one not, and then W to change the width of this, so we're going somewhere there. Then I can shift and scroll to get this a little bit more rounded. Now, I would say that this doesn't necessarily deal with this as perfectly as Mesh Machine does, which does this a little bit more nicely. I'm gonna to have to come to here and then Control Shift and C to circularize this, and then I can change the tension that way once I'm done. So in this instance, maybe not quite as smooth as Mesh Machine, but maybe a little bit more control. So there's definitely a lot of applications for this, and I haven't even covered half the features like smooth and things like that. The other one that's quite nice, uh, let's just do a circle, no, let's do a cylinder, something like that. And let's just say I'm being really lazy with my modeling and I shift and D, and then let's just scale that in, G and Z that up, and I boolean this together, and I suddenly go, oh, this is really nice. Oh no, actually, I need this to be quads. 
what I can do is go into edge mode and select, let's say here to here, control shift and R and then hit C and that will just connect everything. Effectively, what this has done is it's gone, here's these vertices, join. Here's these vertices, join. Here's these vertices, join. And that is a really tedious thing to do. Now, do note that we can do this in Blender. If we just go into face mode, select that and that, and then X, and then delete those faces, and then go into edge mode and select there, and shift select there, and control and E, and then we bridge edge loops. We can do this in native Blender, but it is just, well, really, really, really tedious. And we don't want to have to do this. So, yeah. A lot of nice features, again, not covering all of them, but I just thought this was really interesting and I thought I'd throw this out there just so you could get an idea of this. Now, I'm just throwing up a couple of videos as you can see of the different functions that it can do. This is shown on the documentation and there is a link to this in the description. It is an affiliate link and I always like to say that, so a little bit of money goes towards the channel if you purchase through that link. But just have a look at what this can do. I think it's an absolute bargain. As I say, if you want me to do a more full tutorial covering this in more depth and a bit more systematically than me just showing what it can do and playing around with it, do feel free to say, I'm really happy to do that. This was more designed to bring a really funky tool to your attention. And to quickly look at how it compares to certain other add-ons where there's similar functions. As always, if you found that useful, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not subscribed, especially if you want to see any more content using this add-on. I might use it in some workflows in the future, just to show some cool things you can do with it. And if you want to support the channel any further, or have more influence over what I decide to do as videos, then there's a link in the description to the Patreon, where for a few dollars a month you get these videos a week early, ad-free, and other great perks as well. Have a great day, guys.